Great. Well, thank you everyone for joining us. We'll kick it right off here with Isabel. Hello everyone. I'm Isabel and thank you for joining our Zoom today. So we're going to be talking about residential education, which on campus we call it res ed. And before we get started, um, just if everyone could please mute their microphones just so that um, this is being recorded so that future viewers can see it. So we want to limit extra noise as much as possible. Um, and any questions you have can be submitted via chat. So like on the bottom, you can just chat any of us and we can answer your questions later in the session. So my name is Isabel Kiza, and I'm a junior at Hobart and William Smith Colleges and I'm from La Mirada, California. I'm double majoring in psychology and education with a minor in biology. And I hold various leadership positions on campus, such as Williamson class president and resident assistant, or as we say, RAs. I'm a Posse scholar, a member of Laurel Society and Psych High Honor Society. And I work with, I work as a student athletic trainer for sports medicine. I've been an RA in JPR, a co-ed residence hall, and I'm currently an RA in Cheryl. I'm here today with the assistant dean for student engagement, Shelly Basio. Shelly, to get us started, can you tell everyone a little bit about yourself and your work at the colleges? Yeah, thank you. Uh, so thank you everybody for being with us today. This is always just a really uh, exciting opportunity for us to talk about all of the wonderful things that typically happen in a residence hall uh, first year experience. So my name is Shelly Basilio. I serve as the Assistant Dean of Student Engagement here at the colleges. Uh, and I've been with HWS for about eight years, uh, which is kind of crazy to think about and, and to say. Um, I oversee residential education, which is all of our residence halls, housing, resident assistance, the whole experience really of living on a college campus and living in a residence hall. And then I also have some other uh, great projects that I get to work with, including supporting our posse scholars on campus and working closely with our students who identify as first generation. So as I've mentioned, I've been an RA in JPR, which is a first year residence hall and the options are somewhat different than they are for like the upperclassmen. So could you please explain the options that students can choose from Shelly? Yeah, so for first year students, we really want you to have that traditional first year experience. And part of that means having a roommate. So the majority of our rooms for first year students are double rooms. Um, but we do a really, really great job at pairing folks together so that it's a, a good positive experience where you can really feel like your residence hall room is your home for the 10 months that you're in Geneva, New York. Um, so um, there are a lot of different environments for first year students in these first year residence halls, but for the most part, all first years live with other first years. We have all gender buildings, we have single gender buildings, we have living learning communities. Um, so there's really a lot of different opportunities for first year students to, um, to live in. Um, and I think something that makes HWS really unique is we give first year students the opportunity to submit um, a short essay or any personal information that they'd like to share with us in addition to our questionnaire. And that really gives us the ability to get to know you a little bit better. And if there's something specific we should know that isn't, you know, I'm a messy person or I sleep in till noon every day, it gives us the opportunity to find a roommate who we think will be a really excellent match. So I know you kind of already talked about it, Shelly, but in addition to the style of the housing, could you touch upon like how students, like I know you said like the survey and stuff like that, but also what does it mean to live in a learning community? Yeah, so living learning communities for first year students really are our bread and butter. I, I could not be more proud of our living learning community program. So what that means is all first year students take a first year seminar course as part of your requirements at HWS. All of those FSEMs are different depending on what your faculty members are passionate about. But the cool thing is your FSEM professor is also your advisor so you have a really close relationship with a faculty member during orientation um, and, and from there on, right? So that person will be with you for at least two years until you declare a major. So for our living learning communities, not all FSEMs are living learning communities, but a lot of them are. That means that that course 
is taught in your residence hall on your floor in a classroom space. So your faculty member comes to you for that course. The course is taught in the lounge classroom space in the building. So it's a multifunctional space on your floor that during class time is a classroom and on weekends is whatever you hope it to be, right? A place to study, we hope, a place to socialize. Um, so aside from your faculty member coming to you for that class, only people in that first year seminar live on that floor. So it really is a cohort model. Uh, and we've done a lot of research and the students living in those living learning communities tend to have uh, a lot more confidence going into their sophomore year. They feel more comfortable going to their faculty members for help if they need it. They um, typically have higher um, rates of engagement with their peers. So we are really excited about that opportunity. And I hope that, um, that a lot of you will consider living learning communities at HWS because they really are such an amazing experience for students. So the other piece of first year housing that I knew was a top concern for me coming from California, like choosing a roommate or like even finding one was um, roommate selection. So can you explain how roommates are matched and your advice on trying to choose a roommate before coming to campus? Absolutely. So a lot of incoming students everywhere feel this immense sense of pressure to try to find a roommate on Facebook or Snapchat or Instagram. Um, and that's all fine and good, but it is certainly not something that you need to do. If you are coming to HWS and your best friend from high school is coming to HWS, I always encourage folks not to live together because we really want you to immerse yourself into the Finger Lakes, Geneva, HWS as a whole, and it gives you somewhere to visit, someone to visit on campus. So when it comes to roommate pairs, we take a variety of factors into consideration. First and foremost, you're here for your education. So we place you with other folks in your first year seminar because we want you to be able to walk down the hall and say, hey, I didn't understand this reading or hey, this part was really, really interesting and I just wanted to sort of run my thoughts by you. So we place first year students in the same seminar class in the same building as much as we can. From there, we take your preferences into consideration. So if living in an all female identified building is most important to you, then we're gonna do everything we can to make that happen. We also send you that roommate preference form, which I touched on earlier. So you'll have the opportunity to really give us a sense of who you are and to provide us with any information that's unique to you. My word of advice is to fill out your preference form alone. Please do not have your parents fill that out for you. Please do not even allow your parents to be in the room when you fill that out. I promise you that's something we want you to do. Now, people always ask me the reason for that. So when I was going to college, my mom said, you know, you're so messy. Make sure you say that you are, you know, hope to have a clean room. Maybe your roommate will rub off on you, right? So we want you to be really honest in those preference forms so that way we can find someone who you're really going to gel with. So it's really important to us that you fill that out by yourself um, and not with any parental supervision. Yeah, so before we open up to audience questions, do you have any recommendations on what students should or should not bring with them? So for example, like shopping for dorm accessories is really fun and I remember I loved it, but there are a lot of myths about what is or what is not needed in your room. Yeah, and Isabel, feel free to jump in here too because I'm sure you know everyone on the call is much more interested in your experience <laughs> than my spiel. So feel free to jump in, but um, what I typically tell people is when you're packing for college, make a list of everything you want to pack and then cut your list in half. The rooms are very spacious for a residence hall, but it's still a residence hall, right? You don't need to bring five winter jackets and eight pairs of boots with you. You'll be just fine with one or two and a couple pairs of shoes, right? So make that list and cut it in half. We also recognize that folks you know, you're, you're going to get homesick at some point. So bring pictures, right? Bring some mementos from home that will make you feel 
happy when you think of them and when you look at them, right? So if your dog is a big part of your life and your furry sibling, make sure that you're bringing a picture of your dog um, to have in your residence hall. So I'm actually in a residence hall room right now. I'm in our showroom. So I'm going to give you a quick tour. So you walk in the door here and I am in Jackson Hall. We'll see how to do this. So there's a pretty big closet space here. The closets are built in and there's two of them. So this is a double room. So you've got some shelving at the top. You've got the bar. Plus you've got a little shelf at the bottom. Everyone gets one of these tall dressers. Everybody has a desk and a desk chair and a twin bed. Most are twin extra large. Nice big window, super, super bright in here. Other bed, other dresser, and there's a, a fridge in here as well. So lots of natural light. There's also overhead lighting. And our rooms for first year students are typically about 180 square feet. So they are pretty decent size. Uh, and I see a question here, can we move things around? Absolutely, we've seen lots of really creative um, layouts for residence hall rooms. All of our beds also loft, so you could bunk them if you wanted more space, or a lot of people will move them up and then put fridges and things underneath them. So you have a lot of, lot of options. And you can hang up posters, pictures, everything like that, as long as it's not completely covering the wall, because uh, we don't want it to be a fire hazard. So. Um, certainly some pictures, some posters, anything you can do to make it feel like home. Yeah, so my first year, just going back to like the roommate selection, because I know like people are privately messaging, I'll just like explain a little bit about my experience. So I was in Posse and I chose my roommate through Posse. So we like had each other, which was nice because it was like someone I had known and stuff. But a lot of the times like we talk about it and we were like, yeah, like, maybe we shouldn't have room together because I feel that like, even though I did have my FSM, I got really close to them. So I feel like it's nice to like, you always know, like if you do come with like students from your high school, like any friends that you know that come here, you're always going to like hang out with them. But I think it's always nice to have like a roommate that you can just live with because you never know, like that roommate could become your best friend and you guys can each like have your separate group of friends and like even make friends together and stuff. So it's really nice because I feel that you have the opportunity to meet new people and like not just like stay with like your high school friends or like you guys can always branch out and then come back to each other. So I recommend taking that survey honestly because a lot of the times we're like, yeah, it would be a perfect match and stuff because like we have similar personalities. But when it came to like sleeping situations, like I couldn't sleep with the lights on or like I went to bed like by midnight and then she was the opposite where like she could sleep with the lights on and she wouldn't go to sleep till 3 a.m. So it's just like you want to answer it honestly because at the end of the day, like those like like small things like that could have been resolved if like we both took it like honestly and realized like, hey, like we might not be the best roommates, but like we can still be friends and stuff like that. So I say just like Shelly said, like take it honestly because at the end of the day, like you're going to be living with your roommate for a year and you want to make it like that. So that's a perfect match. And I think Res Ed does a really well job with like roommate selections. And I know my residents, our floors gets along really well and stuff. And yeah, it can be rowdy, but we all get along, so I like it. And it's a nice community to live in. That's great. So there's a couple of questions in the chat. When do we take the roommate survey and when will the results come out? So once you um, have committed to HWS and we sort of start that process of welcoming you into the Hobart and William Smith community, then you'll start to get all of that information. So we typically have that available um, right around May 1st, and you'll have a couple of months to fill out that information, that survey. Uh, and then we typically send out roommate information via email mid-July, end of July, beginning of August. So in that sort of two-week window there um, to make sure we give you plenty of time to get in touch with that person before you come and make any plans you want and things like that. So. Um, you'll know who your roommate is about a month before you come uh, to campus. Um, Isabel, do you want to talk a little bit about orientation and what that looks like? Yes. So for orientation, you get put with your FSM. So 
um, once like, I don't know if you guys already have done it, but it'll ask like, what like FSEMs are you interested, in, which is your first year seminar. So like mine was the mindful body, which was like yoga and stuff like that. So that was really fun. So orientation, we were placed together and then we would be out in like breakout rooms. So I really got to know my FSEM and they were my first group of like close friends and stuff. And it was nice because I saw them two times a week in class when we would do yoga together. But then um, we also like, some of us lived on the same like residence hall. So like we would like come up and down, like just hang out with each other. But the thing that I really like that HWS does is these first year seminars because you already have like a group, you know, the first day of classes. And then you get really close with your professor because they're your advisor and then you're like group and you always see them. So I'm so close with like my first year seminar and we always have like a group chat and we'll just like message and stuff. And uh, somebody asked on average, how many questions are on the survey? It's really only 20, 25 questions. So it's not, um, it's not anything that's gonna take you a long time. It should be really fun to fill out, right? And sort of think about what your experience is like. Um, and somebody asked how many students are in each FSEM. Typically there's only 16 students and the professor in that FSM group. So we keep those classes really small. The largest, I think, is 16. Many of them are much smaller than that. Um, so someone asked if flying students get the opportunity to use a dorms during orientation. So Res Ed works really well with like international students or just anyone in like their flying situation. So you don't really need to get a hotel until the official move-in day. Just make sure you're like on top of it and emailing like Shelly or Res Ed because they're very accommodating with like understanding like fly-in and stuff like that. So for first incoming first year students, we have a four day orientation that leads right into the start of classes. So I know some colleges have in orientation over the summer and then you go back. Ours is right before the start of the semester because we want you to be here and acclimating yourself before that first day of classes. So uh, it used to be three days and students really loved the orientation process, but it was tiring. Uh, so we made it four days and gave folks a little bit more time to be autonomous and just sort of build some of those organic friendships and relationships. Um, before classes start. So you can anticipate, you know, lots of food trucks and bingo and prizes and games and all sorts of stuff during that time. Um, so I, I believe the first day of class, Ryan, do you know when the first day of class is? Or if you wanna look up the calendar, um, but first year students do come four days before the first day of class for orientation. I know somebody asked that in the chat. And then the question of how far away are first year dorms from classes? So I don't know if you guys know, but there's like the Hill, which is like all girls. And then there's like JPR. But honestly, I feel like it's not far. Like I know a lot of college campuses are like huge, but our campus, I feel like location wise, it's really easy. Like I would say, a fast walk or so I feel like it takes me five minutes but I mean 10 minutes and you have like 10 minutes for like passing periods to get across and you don't really need all of your 10 minutes but yeah everything's like conveniently placed I'd say. Yeah absolutely our classrooms are really close to our residence halls with the exception of the art it's an architecture campus that's a little bit further away um but even that at our for this point is probably a 10 minute walk, I would say. Um, and on the really cold days or the really rainy days, campus safety just seems to see an uptick in the amount of students who are requesting rides around campus. I can't imagine why, um, but there are lots of folks who are able to help you and support you um, in getting to class as well. Um, so the Geneva area, a couple of people have asked about this too. So uh, there is a Wegmans, which is the absolute best grocery store ever. I will not argue with anyone. Wegmans is superior to everything else. And that's just um, about 0.2 miles from campus. You can actually see it from some of our residence halls. So there's a really close easy place to get groceries. Uh, we have a Walmart down the street, lots of pharmacies, lots of really great restaurants. 
uh, all within walking distance. So uh, about half a mile from campus is our downtown Geneva. And they've got all sorts of little shops, restaurants, coffee places, um, you know, barber shops, that type of thing. Um, but it is small and quaint and um, really beautiful. We're also right on the lake. And when I say right on the lake, I mean, from where I am in Jackson, if I walk up the hill, maybe 200 feet, you can see all of Seneca Lake. So it really is an absolutely beautiful place to be. Um, I don't know. I don't have a car, but Shelly, do you want to talk about if first years can bring their cars with them? Yeah, so first years absolutely can bring cars to campus. Uh, there is just restricted parking. So there are certainly plenty of places to park for first year students. There's not, it's not that too many students bring cars, but there are certain lots for first year students and lots for upperclassmen students. So you may want to bring your car and drop your groceries off at your room and then you know, drive your car to the lot and schlep it back, um, back to your residence hall. Um, oh, good question. Are there a lot of discounts in town? Yes, so our student activities office is awesome and they work with local businesses all the time to be able to provide discounts. Let's see if there's a flyer in here. There's not one in here, but there are posters around campus with probably 20 or 30 logos of different restaurants that all offer discounts when you show your one card. Um, and maybe it's, you know, 10% off um, your coffee order or free donut on Mondays when you purchase a beverage, whatever. So there's a lot of discounts available. Um, Isabel, do you want to talk a little bit about the one card? Yes. Okay. So um, you will all get like a one card. It's like your student IDs. You probably have like your high school, but to get into your residence hall, you have to key in. So for example, I live in Cheryl and I can only key into Cheryl. I can't key into like JPR and stuff like that, but you have to have that around a lot. Just also for like identification purposes and your one card you use like to go to the dining hall. So you'll like swipe in and stuff. And I don't know, it's just kind of like your like license or like your car that you would just have, like it's always, it's always on me. I don't travel without it. So there are some other benefits to your one card as well. So we call it a one card because we want it to be sort of your one stop shop. So not only does it get you into your residence hall uh, access, as Isabel said, you also use it for all of your dining, either in our unlimited uh, saga um, dining hall or at any of the cafes on campus, you can use it. Um, and you can also load money on it. Um, so if you want to purchase a pizza from Mark's Pizzeria downtown on a Friday night, you can load money onto your one card and then use that money to purchase food at some of our local businesses as well. So for any parents, grandparents on the call, um, students certainly look forward to getting that call that 20 bucks or 50 bucks or whatever has been added to a student's community cash on their one card. So those students are often just beaming when they're like, yeah, my mom called and she just added 50 bucks. Let's go get a pizza. Um, so that's certainly an option. We also use that card for laundry. Um, so if you are doing laundry in your residence hall, we just replaced all of the washers and dryers. Uh, so that they uh, text you when the washer is free and then it will text you when your wash is ready to go into the dryer. And then once the dryer is done, it actually locks for 15 minutes until you come down with your code to get your clothes. So we're super high tech around here. Um, and so your one card really helps you in a lot of different areas. And if you lose it or it breaks, it's super easy to get it replaced. It's right, you get it replaced right in the student center where you go for the majority of your meals. And I know someone asked how close our targets are Walmart. We have a Walmart that's six minutes away driving. And then like for food, I know a lot of people like go to Wagons or like Walmart too. And then a question was, what are the options for upper house? upper class housing and can you live off campus? Those are great questions. So upper class students are able to choose their own housing via lottery system where students are sort of randomly generated a lottery number and then select housing based upon that number. So rising seniors are gonna select housing first then rising juniors and rising sophomores. 
And for being such a small private liberal arts institution, we actually have a ton of different opportunities for students. So we have 52 different residential properties for students to choose from. So you can have a very different experience on campus every single year. So it's a first year, let's say you're living in a traditional residence hall in a double. Your sophomore year, you may be living in a theme house, uh, which we can talk about in a minute in a super uh, unique and um, something we're really proud of here at HWS. Your junior year, you may choose to live in 380 South Main, which is full uh, apartment style living um, downtown across from the pizza place that we were talking about earlier. And as a senior, you may choose to live in Odell's Village, which is all about as all single rooms in apartments. So you and three of your closest friends could share an apartment together. Um, so I, I sort of briefly mentioned our theme houses. So we have about 25 small houses around the perimeter of campus, ranging from six students to 30 students. And those are all student initiated themes. So they change every year, depending on what students are interested in. Uh, so for this upcoming year, we have houses ranging from uh, the meditation and wellness house to the BIPOC, um, LGBTQ um, and allies house. We have music houses, we have um, houses for folks who are interested in raising money for cancer research. We have a make a wish house on campus. So there's really opportunities to make your housing experience unique at HWS and different all four years. So somebody asked also if um, we can, uh, if you could live off campus. So the answer to that is no, we are a residential campus. So we require students to live on campus all four years. But because we have 52 different buildings to choose from, it really doesn't feel um, like a burden for the majority of students, right? So we get some folks who are coming from boarding schools that will say, well, gee, I lived in a dorm already for all of this time, right? I want that sort of independent living experience. So for those students, we would suggest 380 South Main, we would suggest apartment style or suite style living, maybe in Odell's Village, where folks have access to a full kitchen, a full apartment, if you will, um, so they can still have that aspect of independent living while still remaining on campus and getting all of the benefits of that. Um, somebody asked about RAs. So Isabel, do you want to um, take that one? Yes, and I'll also answer the question about talking about the impact of COVID-19 on campus. So for RA, you don't apply to like February, I believe. Um, but I feel like this semester or like this whole year with like the impact of COVID-19, like, yes, it has been different. And it's I've seen like my residents slowly adjust just because it's hard to be like outgoing and stuff like that, because like we all have our mask on. So it's really hard to like introduce ourselves or like even recognize each other. So it took us like a while to get to like know each other's names and stuff and like seeing each other without masks and stuff. But we still have been able to have like our RE events. So for example, um, last semester I did like fall decorating, like cookie decorating with my residents. So we like, I can show you guys in a bit, but like we, I'll show you right now. But um, so I live in Cheryl and this is my view outside. So a lot of people are playing basketball, but we just like set up over there in like the grass and we had tables and we socially distanced and had two people at like each table. And we each had like our own little kits for like cookies and stuff. And I feel like, yes, there has been an impact on COVID, but there are like ways and like your RAs are well equipped enough to like still have opportunities to build a sense of community on your floor. And we've also had like, um, I know some have had like pass out like succulents and stuff like that, or like even on Zoom, like some RAs have held like events where like Netflix party or like you can like play games online. So um, yeah, and our school has like a small little ice rink and we like socially distance and stuff. So it's nice, like it's still like, Yes, like COVID does exist, but we take like the protocols and like all that where it's like safe enough to still be outside with one another. And for RA, I love it. I get a single, but also I get to meet like incoming first years all the time and just interact with everyone and meet new people every year. 
Um, so just a couple of additions. Thank you, Isabel. That was, it's always great to hear a student perspective. We have every intention of, of hoping that by the fall, we will have as normal of an experience as possible. So we are constantly talking with uh, the New York State Governor's Office, as well as our Ontario County Health Department. Um, we are, are doing everything we can to ensure that folks are able to get vaccinated. So that way we can truly hope for a fall semester that feels more normal. I'm sure there will still be some protocols in place because co you know there will still be folks with COVID in the fall, but the, for the, you know, the majority of our planning, we're doing everything we can to ensure students having the most normal experience as possible by the fall semester. So um, we're not making decisions on what exactly that will look like yet because we have been following the science and wanna ensure that we are making the decisions that are going to keep our community safe. So like Isabel said, folks are masking, they're social distancing, following protocols. And we've been really lucky and honestly so proud of our HWS students for taking this seriously and recognizing the high stakes of being together on a college campus during COVID. Um, and we've, we've seen great success so far this year and it's finally sunny and gorgeous outside. It's mid sixties all week. Um, so we're seeing lots of folks, I'm looking out the window right now. I can see the basketball court, Isabel, from the other side. That's how close our residence halls are together. Um, and there's some folks skateboarding in the parking lot and things like that. So there's lots of, lots of things to do we also uh, have gotten pretty creative, right? So we know that being outside is the safest place for our students to socialize. So this winter we bought a bunch of fire pits and heat lamps and things like that so we could provide students with experiences even though it was cold. So we did a winter fest this year where we brought in a really amazing light show and had uh, socially distanced s'mores and the ice rink. We had food trucks all over campus, um, and it was just a, a really cool event. So COVID has taught us that we can still engage with one another in ways that are meaningful and important, um, even though we had to do so from six feet away with a face covering. Yes, um, and also like there's a lot of like clubs on campus and your like student tuition fees and stuff like that works out. So like every now and then we have like fun Friday where um, we'll have like a food truck and you can get like free food or like tie dye or like Friday flicks and stuff like that. So there's always opportunities to be engaged even if you don't have like plans on the weekend or like there's things like stuff a plush and you can get like a stuffed animal and just do it yourself. But I know someone asked uh, what are the bathroom likes in residence halls and are they all gender or specific for each gender? So. Cheryl kind of works differently than, well, actually, I think they like kind of all work the same, but I know when I lived in JPR, we had two bathrooms like on opposite ends and we had one that was like, like all males or like all females or sometimes we even did like, like co-ed or like stuff like that. Like our floor was like comfortable and stuff, but in Cheryl, the way it works is it like the basement, the first floor and the third floor are males and then the second is all female. So it just kind of depends on where you live and you can check on, I sent like a link, but you can check like if it's like all gender and stuff like that. But I don't know if you kind of want to go more in depth about it, Shelly. And it's like communal too. Yeah, so the majority of bathrooms in first year areas are communal, meaning that there are large bathrooms for folks who live on the floor. Um, most of our bathrooms in first year areas are either for male identified students or female identified students. And all of our residence hall buildings also have all gender bathrooms, uh, which are private uh, stalls for anyone who doesn't feel comfortable using the all male identified or all female identified uh, bathrooms. So those are lockable one stall bathrooms as well. Um, for upper class students, we typically follow the same um, sort of pattern with, with restrooms, except a lot of upper class students do have um, suites with bathrooms in it. So if you choose to live in an all gender suite, uh, then you'd be sharing the, the restroom with the folks that you choose to live with. So that's 
all the time we have for today. And thank you for joining us. If you have for further questions or you'd like to get in touch with us later, please don't hesitate. You can always ask me anything. I just put my email in the group chat. So I don't know if you want to do the same, Shelly, but sorry. just reach out to me. Yeah, you can always reach out to me. And thank you so much. And best of luck as you make your final decision. We are so excited and delighted to have spent this time with you. Please reach out to Isabel, reach out to me. We are, we're really excited and hopeful to see many of you on campus in the fall. Many of you may be on Isabel's floor, which could be really exciting. So when you see us in August, make sure you stop and say hi um, and let us know that you're a part of this call.